Aloha, my name is Cheryl Matsuoka, the Executive Director of the Hawaii Restaurant Association and the Hawaii Restaurant Association Educational Foundation. Mahalo for joining me here on Restaurants of Hawaii on the ThinkTech platform. Today, we're gonna to be talking about a very heavy subject and our hearts are very heavy as we think about those who have been affected by the Maui wildfires. Although in the face of this tra tragedy, we have also witnessed incredible strength and unity in our state. It's heartwarming to see the outpouring of love and support from all corners of our state. And today I'd like to have my guests introduce themselves. I'm honored to have two very special guests who will share with us exactly what is needed today in Maui on the Lahaina front. So first I'd like to have Auntie Blanche. My dear Auntie Blanche was introduced to me by my dear Auntie Peggy. And mm -hmm. as soon as I, the wildfires hit, I was in Auntie Peggy's office and I had an opportunity to speak to Auntie Blanche over the phone. That next morning, Monday morning, I drove to Waimanalo to meet Auntie Blanche and to see how we could support her in her initiative. Auntie Blanche, could you please introduce yourself? Aloha, my name is Blanche McMillan. I am the CEO of the Hui Mahi Aina of the Homeless Shelter, Houseless Shelter, and the Poor. Mahalo. Mahalo, Auntie. And I'd like to now introduce Major, Major Troy, you know, gosh, how do I say this? Major, I don't know if you heard the story, but I was introduced to, to people over at the Salvation Army on the Saturday after the wildfires. I don't know if you heard the story that Naomi emailed me at 4 a.m. in the morning. The email came through and what she was requesting was takeout containers because now this is Saturday, right? So there's been a few days that we've been dealing with the wildfires. Immediately as her request came in for takeout containers, because everybody right needed to, to serve food, I was able to get a truckload of um, takeout containers and utensils over to the Salvation Army so that you all could continue all the great work that you do. Major Trimmer, please introduce yourself. Well, thank you. Uh, Major Troy Trimmer, I'm the Salvation Army's uh, Divisional Headquarters at, here in Hawaii. I'm the Divisional Commander for the Hawaiian Pacific Islands Division. So uh, that oversees all of the Hawaiian Islands clear out to Guam, Saipan, uh, and beyond. Thank you for joining me. So Major, how has the Salvation Army been affected by the Maui wildfires? Well, Cheryl, first of all, um, Maui is our family, right? Um, the Salvation Army has been in Maui since 1895. Um, in fact, during the fires, our own operation in Lahaina, we've lost everything. Um, praise God, we didn't lose our personnel, uh, but we lost our core building. Our, that's a church for the Salvation Army. We lost our administration. We lost our thrift store. Uh, we lost our services to the community that happened there uh, and even lost the, the parsonage or the, or the Salvation Army quarters. Um, but that very first night, our team made their way over to Kahului and uh, got into the kitchen, even having lost their own homes. Uh, got into the kitchen and began preparing meals, which is what the Salvation Army does. So it's impacted us greatly. Uh, the, the most barring or, or difficult thing right now really is that we've lost the Lahaina operation. So we're still efforting, trying to get back into the west side. Uh, you know, we're looking at every opportunity and option that is there, but but we're not there. So prior to the, to the fires, you know, the Salvation Army fed um, on daily basis, our houseless friends uh, provided hygiene kits, um, did services to Kapuna. And so being primarily focused on our, our station in Kahului right now, all of our personnel goes over there every day to make sure where all of our services are continuing to happen. It, it lays heavy upon the hearts of our people that they're not back in the community in which they had to, to uh, flee from. So we're really efforting hard to get there. That's probably the biggest impact uh, personally uh, to us as an organization. And then of course, all of the Ohana around all the neighboring islands. The Salvation Army is a, a huge family. And when one part of the family hurts, uh, just like everyone else in Blanche and her team, uh, the rest of us hurt. So that's probably been the most significant manner. And I heard stories, Major Tremura, of even your, your staff losing homes in Lahaina and still work through that. 
Yeah, they, they have. Um, almost all of our volunteer base and our staff who uh, lost homes there were immediately serving, uh, still serve today. Uh, we have a, a fabulous guy we call Uncle, D Uncle Dino, who uh, has helped a lot with the Salvation Army over the years and, and has been helped by the Salvation Army. And when we were with him in Maui uh, just a few weeks ago, he was able to tell me, you know, you know, Major, uh, the most pressing thing upon my heart that's been meaningful to me of all the time I've been with the Salvation Army is during this fire to just be able to, to be with people and to cry with people. And so while they're serving meals, they're taking time to talk story and to be with people who are, are impacted deeply by this, this tragedy. Thank you for all that you do at Auntie Blanche. Oh yeah. my God, I drove up there on Monday and I saw your facility out there at Mahi Ayana. I, I was so impressed. Auntie, while I was there, the Waimanalo Healthcare staff was also over there, you know, providing all of the checkups that they need to, all of the different things that they need to do for record keeping. So yeah. you such a significant leader in our community. It's just an honor to meet you, but you know, nice now, to meet you. yeah, yes, oh. and I, I've seen you yeah. up at the Waimanalo community and Oahu, and now you're on Maui. Can you please share with us what you've been going through in the last four weeks? Actually, when when I first started, I, I got a wake up call, and I never thought Maui would have fire there in Lahaina, and it was. And I got on a phone, just one phone call, made a millions of uh, viewers came over and said, what can I do? Well, how can I help? And what I did, I decided, you know what? It is time for me to help our people in Maui. You know, this amazing thing, what really, 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 the people of Hawaii really got together in this program, I mean, this special thing that what happened to one of our islands and we really went and pulled through with each other. It was so unbelievable how touching, how chicken skin it was when people started to come here and started to donate. And then from one thing, it became a 420 pallets of things that we needed. We needed generator. It just came in one after another. But I didn't know my brother, my nephew who lives in Maui, had 75 people in, on his property that came from Napili Way, out from Lahaina. And I said, what a blessing. What I did, I got two containers to his home and made sure that our 75 families or people was there to feed them, medical, uh, whatever the babies needed, they had everything. We supplied everything. And because of the love of the people, that made what it is today. And that we continue on to bless each and every one of them. And that's why, you know, we had important people that brought things like Augie Tea. We had um, some big companies like Pimentes. We have, uh, we even had our Waimanalo stores that donated a lot of things and brought food to feed all of us. There were hundreds and hundreds of volunteers every single day here. 13 days straight, nonstop. We started from five in the morning till 10 at night. And I never stopped anyone from bringing things. Even if they come like 11 out the door will always be open for everyone. So that's why we kept on continuing. And people were calling me, how are you gonna get things there? It was only simple. I prayed to God, God gave me the containers. I had 20, uh, 15 containers, a total of 17 containers that went to Maui. And then we had uh, families that collected the containers there, plus the mayor's wife, Kaihi, who was the leader of Maui for our, uh, our containers and her two daughters. They were very amazing how beautiful it was, how things just falls in place when you do this kind of work. When you, when you see this kind of thing, you just, I mean, it's unbelievable. There's no words that can explain that things can work. I mean, you know, things just work out. And today I continue on in collecting for Maui because I want, when I went there, I went to um, Pula. Yes, I went to the hubs and whatever. And that's where our staff are going to Pula. And then from there, we went to Kihei. Kihei was another place. We, that's another hub. And then we have Kiopalani, 
Um, I think that was um, a park and that's where all the supplies are going. So I wanted to be one of those who for the emergency hubs. Whenever they run out, there will always be things to give out to the people. And this is what I want to do for the whole year or maybe continue on doing what is my job is all about. And I want to make sure that I hope and I pray that I will be one of them that will open up a shelter. Right now, I want to open shelters for homeless and houseless. But today, because of our people, of the disaster of the fire, they have nowhere to go. And I want to be there because we do have a lead, but I have to pray on it because it belongs to the state. And I'm trying to see if we can put temporary homes, because there's a lot of people that called me that have shelter, I mean, have homes that it's already made to be put on the land. If I can do 200 houses, I'll be so happy. Let me tell you, I'll be so glad. Bring our people home and in a safe environment and a safer place for the family. And that is my goal. Thank and I you. thank you very much. No, thank you, Auntie Blanche. I've been out to your Waimanalo location, and what Auntie Blanche was saying to me, asking me is, you know, if you know anybody who has lumber, Cheryl, I could use lumber. I've been out there. I've seen the farm, Auntie. I've been out there and seen the people and the Waimanalo um, healthcare system over there. So with their Yes, taking out over there, doing their tasks and providing medication and things like that. So thank you, Auntie, for all that you do. Yes. And then one more thing I want to tell you about my shelter. Our shelter is not run by the city, state, or gov I mean, the governor, a government, I mean, I'm sorry. It is run by my nonprofit. It's because of the love of the people that brings things into this area and, and always serving our people. And that's why we continue to build many more homes. And today we have 75 people I have here. And I have 50 homes. And I brought the old Hawaiian style. If you believe in the land, the land would take care of you. And that's exactly what I do here. And we all work together. There's no one who lives in their house all day, 24 hours. Everybody's outside in the garden. We have garden. We have, uh, we have heads. I mean, people who take care of the kitchen. It's all community kitchen, bathrooms, showers. We do security on our own. We do everything together. And this is where everywhere in this entire Hawaiian island should bring back that. And we all work together as one. Yes, and Auntie was on the midweek cover. Auntie, I want to say, was it like five weeks ago? Was it? It feels it was like- during the time of the, of, um, the the fire. It was during the time we were collecting. And we had, I had KHON News, I had Midweek, and then we had our own televised going on at the same time. And I had to split my body into three different parts. But you know what? Let me tell you something. It all came out beautiful. Everything you. came out beautiful. Yes. I go out to meet you on Monday, and then here it is on Wednesday. You're in my <laughs> I was like, hey, I was just with Auntie Blanche. So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're right. And then you see me on the midweek. Yes. They wanted to just make a story about it, how fast I moved on this um, project for Maui. Yes. Because, you know, one thing, my heart goes to my people. And that's where I'll be always. I will always be there for them. And, you know, don't waste any time. Do it. I believe you do it. So that things can move. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And Major Major Trimmer, as we discussed, I have a dear, dear friend, Victor Leonardi. I, I don't even know. We've probably known each other for 15 plus years. And he is a dear, dear friend. And when all this happened, I heard that he flew from Guam straight to Maui, missed me, didn't even come to check in on me on Oahu. So what kind of assistance has the Salvation Army been providing since the onset of the Maui wildfires? Oh, well, Cheryl, before we get into that, uh, yeah, I apologize on Victor's behalf. He he was out in Mawar uh, in Guam for us, and he'd been there for three months uh, responding, which is what the Salvation Army does. So we, we don't just come into disaster and, and move out quickly. We stay yeah. because 
we're, you know, we're in 134 countries. We're positioned in almost every uh, location in, in the United States. And so we respond quickly uh, and we stay long, which is what, what Victor did. So uh, he is a dear friend, which speaks highly of your character as well. I, uh, he's a great man. Uh, and you're right. He was there on the fires the night it happened. I was on the phone with him or, or uh, you know, the app, WhatsApp with him while he was in, in Guam trying to figure out how to get back. And he was back by Friday morning. Uh, from Tuesday night when the fires hit, he was back on Friday morning and, and at the emergency operations centers um, and then running the state VOAD, uh, which is Volunteer Organizations Active in Disasters. So uh, that's the cal caliber and character of people that we have in Hawaii. And we're so, so pleased and honored to, to have him as part of the team. Uh, and under his leadership as our e emergency disaster services director, you know, we've been feeding since day one. Uh, Salvation Army is often first to respond or one of the first organizations to respond because we're positioned so well. And so we've been feeding since day one. Uh, our, we ourselves have been responsible for the delivery of over 90,000 meals, um, you know, in partnership. Uh, we've helped coordinate an additional, you know, there's about 700,000 meals from vetted organizations, from volunteers organizations, active in disaster, not to mention all of those other countless hundreds and thousands of meals that have been provided by people uh, anti, anti here uh, so that, you know, people are being served on a regular basis. So uh, been doing that and then being present with people. Um, we've had the privilege of, of interviewing over 900 households, uh, taking time and, and detailed interviews, trying to find out what next steps, what next needs are, uh, just kind of being with them. And then from that, uh, we do something called emotional and spiritual care. Uh, Auntie mentioned earlier that uh, that need came up and she prays. And then God brings the answer, right? And so yes. one of the one of the greatest privileges we have is just to be present with people, and often those people allow us to pray with them. So we spent uh, we spent over you know um, multiple hours with with over twenty two hundred uh, of the survivors, and just being alongside of them in, in prayer support and encouragement, and just listening to their story, uh, hugging and wrapping arms around them, and and just encouraging them through the day. So uh, that's been. Some of the most significant things we've been doing. Uh, obviously, we continue to feed today, and now we're pivoting into additional services, which um, we're really blessed to, to be able to do based upon those 900 family interviews. And those family interviews are going on. That number is continuing to build. Uh, but from those 900, we found that there's transportation needs. We found that there's, um, you know, other needs that we can come alongside of additional material assistance. So. So we're giving you know gifts, gift cards to Walmart and other places where people can pick up some of their own things and start to return, as crazy as it sounds, to a little bit of normalcy in the midst of what is not normal. Uh, so, yeah, I've been very active, and it's because of people like Victor Leonardi and others who are you know his house, his home is in Maui, as you well know, right? It's that's his home, and um, when he first got back for several weeks, fortunately he didn't lose his house house up country. Um, but his house just smelled like smoke. He'd go home from from contributing to the disaster response every day, and and it, you know it just smelled like smoke. Um, mm. But what a faithful man! And and just like Auntie, all the people who come around us is really what helps us to actually contribute back to the, to our neighbors uh, on 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 Maui. So I hope that give you a little bit of a glance what we're doing. Yes, <laughs> and thank you. So much the two of you, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, shows really Hawaii's resiliency, even though this tragic incident happened, how people are just banding together. And yes. I'm so I'm so sorry to be crying again. I too yes. lost somebody in the Maui fire. Her funeral is this Friday. Mm -hmm. It was a dear friend of ours, and she survived the fire, mm -hmm. but because of the smoke and she did pass. And so it's it's very close to me. And thank you to the two of you for what you're doing. And Major, you hit on it right there. Um, I get calls every day from our businesses. Um, you know, we have members and businesses um, in Lahaina that were affected. And they're looking for money. They're looking for, as you mentioned, the gift cards and things that they can just like just get some small essential things that they need that's not being provided through the donations. Are you providing direct donations to those individuals um, affected by the fire? Yeah, direct services and direct donations in the format of like gift cards. We don't we don't give away cash. It's a good Salvation Army policy. And mm -hmm. often yeah. often is not beneficial. Um, you know, for many people it is, but but it is often not. So 
we do, uh, we're providing gift cards and Foodland certificates and, and uh, Times and, and Safeway and uh, get, uh, Walmart American Express, you know, granted us, gave us $35,000 worth of gift cards that people can use for some of those material assistance. And so, yeah, we're, we've been very honored and blessed to be able to uh, contribute in small ways, you know, to people's lives. And, and as you say, the reality is, is, is um, you know, all those who've been displaced have lost uh, everything, those who are survivors, and not to mention those who've lost their lives, right? And, and yeah. almost everyone who's lost everything is also have a direct and deep connection with somebody who's lost their life. So this is, uh, you know, a gift card's really not a significant issue, but it is an expression of grace and it is an expression yeah. of love. And, um, you know, every opportunity we have as, as, you know, residents and family in Ohana in Hawaii to express love, um, it, whether it's a small tangible way like a gift card or whether it's a hug or a prayer, uh, you know, I think we need to find ways to do that. And we're very privileged as the Salvation Army that we're trusted uh, to come alongside of people in those type of situations and express the love of so many beyond us. Uh, you know, the, the outpouring and benevolence of the world toward toward Maui has just been incredible. And to be able to be trusted as Auntie is uh, to express part of that grace and love to people is just a rich, rich, rewarding experience. Yes. And one more thing I want to explain. Uh, I had a lot of phone calls. They wanted to send money. But once you with me, I'm not the kind of person who would accept the money, but I will try to see where they can send the money. And but most of all was the items. And I'm plus I have a, my grandson who plays for um, Arizona Wildcats, the um, university. They had donated money, but I don't know where it went. But I said, just send it to. Um, actually, the only one that I remember was CNHA and um, Hawaii Foundation was another one, I think, was the one that they wanted to know where they can send the money to. So that's what it was. And, you know, because of being out there, out in the mainland, a lot of people heard about Maui and they really wanted to support. I mean, they're still supporting. People still yet trying to send money, but I just give it to whoever is available. I mean, who I know that would accept the money and give it to the people. And But my heart goes to the people there. Where can we put them? Where can we? Um, the only thing what I always do, I always pray to the Lord. I said, there's only one thing is you who can provide for the people. We need shelters for them because there are nowhere they can go and nowhere they can turn to. And the only way that they can turn to is all of us who believe in the Lord, that we can do it and we can make it happen. Yes. Am I you. correct, Salvation Army? Auntie, you're so you're so well spoken. It's it's so right. And, <laughs> and while uh, you know, while for short term people can be in non congregant shelters like the hotels, I mean, ultimately yeah. um, there's got to be a little bit of of the availability to regain uh, the dignity of of independent living. Yeah, and yeah. so um, the but, hotel would not be there forever. Yeah, we need so to be there for them. Yes. So we're praying along with you for solutions to that and. Uh, Willing to partner with you if there's any way we can help in solutions to that. We're 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 looking at every option and every open door that the Lord brings so that the people yeah. of Maui can be serviced. Yeah. So you're yeah. so right on, Andy. <laughs> thank you so much. And you know, thank you so much for putting us on the you know on this special program. It is an opening for everybody's eyes and it's an opening for everybody's heart to see and hear what we do for the people. Yes. And to get a current um, situation is why I brought the two of you here, because in the beginning, you're right, people were contacting me and saying, you know, um, the, the, one of the football teams, the Raiders, they donated $100,000 yes. and they contacted um, one of our directors and said, where do we put it? And, you know, we give them, of course, you know, because we don't want to be, you know, specific. So we just say these are the top three, right? The Salvation Army, the um, the Hawaii Community Foundation, you know, so we give them suggestions as yeah. to donate. And I'm happy to hear that, um, Major Trimmer, that you were able to give gift cards, especially to things like gas. You know, people need to yeah. get back and forth. It's so important. And, you know, there is no one giving out free gas. So gas cards mm -hmm. are welcome. And, mm -hmm. and that's what the show is all about today. So, Auntie Blanche, you've been on the front lines from the beginning. You know, after the day after I saw you, you flew out. And yes, I did. 
yes. for all your time and effort. Today, right. we've got five minutes left. Today, what do the people of Maui need? If if people are calling me, I'm still asking them to drop off at your Waimanala location, you know, the necessary items. If they're going to drop something off in Waimanalo, Auntie, what do the people of Maui need? The Maui need supplies, medical supplies. That is the most important thing that they need right now. They don't need clothing. They just need medical supplies, campers, toiletries, and um, what do you think that they need? I'm sorry, but my mind is blank on this one uh, because I have so much things on them. And they're um, actually, they need your love. That is the most important thing that the people of Maui needs is our love. They need a cuddle. Yes. They need us. They need all of us to be there for them. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So, Major Tremor, my last question to you is: You're you're there out there. Your your staff is out there. What do the people of Maui need, and how can they get it to the Salvation Army? Well, that's a great question. I mean, obviously it varies. And as we go further along into this disaster, the needs will change. Um, I agree with Auntie that primarily they need the presence of people. They need the presence yeah. of people on Oahu and, and Hawaii and um, Hawaii who know them and who love them, who are willing to take the extra 15 minutes on the phone and just let them talk through their day and talk through their stories. Uh, from that, also understand and realize what needs are. It's very important that we do you know, the interviews with families and try to find out what their specific needs are. But you're right, transportation, some of those things that return, return to normalcy are some of the things that we're seeing um, and that, that we're needing to help our, our, our survivors with. Um, but most more, more than anything else, it's the presence. It's the presence of people, both on Maui mm -hmm. and those. We are one Ohana. We are really yes. one incredible family. Yes, in Hawaii. And, you know, you often end up in disaster fatigue. As a disaster goes on, people start to get tired of the reality because it's been forefront forever and ever and ever. So they need a long-term commitment from, from ANTI and from the Salvation Army and from uh, right. the government and from all of the, the, the nonprofits and, and private sector people working together that we are going to endure this together and work through to the end. Uh, we've yes. been there since 1895. We, we intend to be there till 2295 or beyond. And then I know that ANTI and others will be right there beside us um, trying to find solutions that are meaningful to Maui. Yes, and along with us, Major Auntie, you know, you you both have my direct contact. You can always contact, and we have a whole industry that wants to help. You know, when the fires first broke out, you know, our members over in Maui they have the refrigerated trucks, they have the high cube trucks with lift gates and pallet jacks. They were sending out all their drivers, paying for the gas, paying for their staff to pick up and unload containers of things just to jump into action. As I mentioned, the donation of food, the donation of takeout containers were all needed in the beginning just to get through that period. But we're not out of it yet. We still yes. need to continually contribute. And the Hawaii Restaurant Association is the organization unifying, representing, and supporting the Hawaii's restaurant and food service industry. To our food service industry and to the state of Hawaii, together, we stand as one state, demonstrating our resilience and our aloha spirit. We are Hawaii, and we are united in aloha. Thank you very much for joining me today. Thank, Thank you, you, and God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Yes. Amen.